All right, folks, in today's video, we're going to take a look at this signal generator. Some folks call it an alternative or arbitrary waveform generator. Some folks will even call it a function generator. But this is the June Tech Programmable Signal Generator, the PSG9080. I was contacted by June Tech and they asked if I would do a video review on this. And of course, I said yes, because I like gizmos like this and I like doing video reviews. So here we are. I get that I'm blocking portions of the screen right now, so what I'm going to do is turn me off. And that probably makes a lot of you more happy. I'm not exactly sure how we're gonna shoot all of this. I figured I would just start recording and see how we went. But uh, you can see the branding up here, uh, programmable signal generator. And then it has like this rubberized bumper that goes around the front. There's one that goes around the back to kind of protect it uh, in the event that there's an accident on your bench. I wanted to point out quickly that um, it is dual channel. So here is the controls for channel one and channel two. And you can see the outputs here for channel one and channel two. I can turn both of them on at the same time, turn both off, or turn one or the other on. When I highlight one of these for use, you can see this pointer finger right here will switch from channel to channel. And for example, if I wanted to change the frequency I would just do something along those lines. I'm sorry that this is blurring in and out a little bit. Um, it's kind of bothering me too. I can also use these arrows here to move where I am on my frequency scale in the event that I want to make a change. Maybe if I point with this pointer, it'll help. I don't know. But if you take a look at it and you take a look at the controls, these are actually inputs. This is a mod input and an external input. I'm assuming that you would use these if you wanted to use the frequency counter function uh, here. There's some ports on the back and we'll take a look at those in a minute, but let's run through some of the settings that we see here on the front. So starting at the top, we have our wave and right now it's set for zero, zero sine wave. And you can see I can change that to square, pulse, triangle, ramp, CMOS, and it goes through a bunch of different ones. I can also use uh, computer programming software to go ahead and program my own. Now you see the top and the bottom changing at the same time. It's because I have them synchronized right now. We'll take a look at that in a few minutes. But I can adjust my wave to whatever I want. I can adjust my frequency by using these arrows. We, we saw that earlier. Uh, this goes up to, we'll take a look in the instruction manual, but 80 megahertz for sine wave. And I believe that is limited a little bit with other types of waves. I can come down here and take a look at my amp amplitude or voltage. You can see that changing there. Um, there is limits on this depending upon the type of wave. I can adjust my offset or I can adjust my duty cycle uh, here. And I can also adjust my phase angle. I can go in here and I can apply a mode to the sine wave. And we're going to look at this all on an oscilloscope. But I just wanted to run through some of the functions now. Uh, here is an AM mode on a sine wave. And so what I would do is I would just hit the type if I wanted to change any of the modulation. Like, for example, here's phase key shifting. I'm sorry, here's phase key shifting. This is frequency key shifting. Um, you can do pulse width module uh, burst, and you can do all kinds of different things. It's, it's actually pretty cool. And then this is now called sharp if I wanted to change any of the wave types when I was doing any modulated work. So the source here is from internal. I'm assuming if I was going external, it might be from this port on the front, but I don't know 100%. Here's my carrier frequency. And uh, this is a deviation setting. I'm not 100% sure on what that is, and I don't want to BS anybody, so I'm not going to. Let's go ahead and get out of this. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Now I can go into the system settings here and I have a bunch of different things. Uh, I can change the memories, I can change sound, brightness, language. When you first boot this up, it asks you if you want it in Chinese or English. Let's see what languages we have. Uh, it looks like it's just Chinese or English. I'm not 100% sure what this says, but I think it says subscribe to the Smoke and Ape channel. Uh, it has 21 built-in waveforms and it has storage for 15 arbitrary waveforms. And let's go down to system information, hit the about button. And here you can see the model number, the part number. Um, that's probably a serial number, the hardware version, firmware version, FPGA version. And then there's the website. So I'm going to return there and let me hit page down. 
Now here is where you can sync different things. So you can see that, um, let me go up. My waveform sync was on. We're gonna go ahead and set that to off. And then I thought I had something else synchronized, but I guess I don't. Let me go ahead and save that. And then let me go back here and let me go back to frequency. And then you can see that as I change this, it is not changing on the bottom now. All right. Uh, some other things that we'll take a look at when we're set up is, is that you can actually set a frequency uh, uh, sweep here, which is pretty cool if you're testing like a filter or something along those lines. Here it's just out of the box. Its default frequency is 1 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz. And then you can set your sweep time, direction, and your so, mode. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect this up to a uh, oscilloscope so we can see the output and see how well it does. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this off for now. And then I'm going to unplug it so that we can take a look at the back of the device. Um, here you can see your power in. This is the power in that I'm going to use. Notice that there is an earth ground here and there's some specifications up here. It looks like you can power this off an adapter, a DC 5 volt adapter, but uh, I'm not sure that that adapter has a ground. We'll take a look at that. Here is uh, if you want to synchronize your clock uh, in and out. And then there's a TT TTL um, extension here, and here's your pinouts for the TTL. It also has this earth ground here, but let's take a quick look at that and uh, see what we can find. So here is, let me move this out of the way. Here is a multimeter that we're gonna use, and we have set this for a continuity measurement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on this screw ground here and I'm putting it on the earth ground here and I'm not getting any continuity. Let's test over here. Hear that? So there is continuity between the ground on the DC five volts, but not here. Let's take a look and see what the adapter that came with this looks like. So this did come with some parts. Um, what's interesting is it came with this part, and I don't know what this is. At least it was in the box, and I don't think that I put it in there. Hmm. Well, we're just going to put that there for now. Uh, taking a look at the things that came with it, I have a power cord. I have a USB, uh, I'm sorry, BNC to BNC cable, BNC to alligator clip cable. And then a USB power cable, but I don't have this. And most of these that I get do not have the three prongs like these power cables. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen an adapter that does. So I'm a little curious about that. One of the other things I wanted to do, um, and we can do this real quick with this power cord. Okay, so we have that. Let me go ahead and get my multimeter so now I'm connecting this to the earth ground here and I'm going to connect it to the outer shield and I don't have any continuity between the shield let me move this over I don't have any continuity between the shield ground here here and the earth ground here now if I do this I do have that continuity so um I think you need to pay attention to what you're doing here and how you ground this. I have seen other videos where folks have opened this up and they have run a ground from the side of the board with all of the different modules to the power supply here on the right hand side. Maybe we'll open this up. Maybe we won't. Not hundred percent sure if I've got time to do that, but, um, there is something a little wonky going on with the ground. So you just need to pay attention to that and make sure that you're safe when you're using this. You need to make sure you're safe when you're using any kind of lab equipment, by the way. So this is not unique to this particular device. Now I'll go ahead and include a couple of different links where you can purchase this uh, particular device should you choose to do that. Um, this is the one I would recommend mostly. It is from AliExpress, and I know a lot of people don't like to order off of AliExpress because of delivery times. But uh, this is the least expensive place you can find it, 494.04 right now. You can get it off of sites like Amazon for around 230, 250, somewhere in, in that space, depending. But uh, you can come here and I'll link this below. And there's some links down here to some videos and, and the user manual, which we're gonna take a look at in a second. 
um, the uh, communication protocol for doing uh, software programming from your computer. I have no idea what a WhatsApp technology group is. But there's also some information down here that, uh, that you may find useful. So I'll go ahead and link this below. The other thing is uh, I'll have a link to the user manual, which is pretty good. Um, the link goes to an IP address, not a specific URL. It's 47 pages long. Um, Here are the specifications, which is what we're mostly interested in. Two channel, the sine wave frequency range, uh, one nanohertz to 80 megahertz, sampling rate 300 uh, mega samples a second. And you have your wavelength and various things. So here are your built-in waveforms, your basic waveforms. And then here are the things that we're going to test when we hook this up to an oscilloscope. So we have our sine wave frequency range, uh, square wave goes to 30, uh, triangle goes to 50, and then these go to various different levels. Um, there's also some um, voltage uh, uh, limitations here, and I think we're going to see those here. So you can see within different frequencies, your voltage peak to peak will change. So we're just going to go ahead and set it up, and we're going to play around with those. Um, anyhow, that's it. Let's get to the oscilloscope demo. I'm not sure what's going on here. I've had to record this maybe 15 times, but that's okay. Um, what we have here is the June Tech PSG 9080 connected to my Regal oscilloscope. It's the MSO 5074 for those playing along. Now, folks might say, hey, Ape, why are you using that uh, Regal? The reason I am, it might be Rigel, I don't know. Uh, the reason I am is because it has HDMI out and I can feed it into my computer and into OBS and then I can show it here. And so, and I like it, it's, it's nice. All right, so what we have is we have a sine wave at around 10 kilohertz and I actually have the voltage turned up all the way. It's uh, 25 volts peak to peak right now, which is its max setting. And what I want to do is I want to turn this sine wave all the way up to uh, 60, I'm sorry, 80 megahertz, which is the limit for the sine wave. And we want to check and see if there's any distortion there. So the first thing I'm going to do, because I'm blocking part of this screen, is I'm going to actually turn myself off. Here we go. And then uh, what we're going to do is we are going to adjust the frequency. And so right now I can start turning this up. And this is 250 uh, kilohertz. So let me go ahead and adjust that in, and you can see it's fine, and it should be, a, that's a relatively low frequency. So let's just keep going. This is 500 is where I'm going to stop, and that is exactly what we should see. Um, our voltage peak to peak has actually dropped a little bit. It should be closer to 25, and it looks like we're around 24.1.2. So let's go all the way up to 1 megahertz, and there we go. And uh, everything still seems to look just fine. Our voltage peak to peak is down uh, to 20, uh, 1920. It's even teetering on 18 there. So that is about a 20% drop. Um, that's okay. So let me go ahead and zoom this in a little bit. And we are going to go out and let's go up to 10 megahertz. And so here we are at, uh, at, at 10 megahertz. And you can see our voltage peak to peak dropped again. And I believe this is consistent with what we saw in the... Um, what is it in the instruction manual? Oops, I went a little too uh, a little too much there. So let's go ahead, and zoom in on that a little bit more. The sine wave looks fine, so let's keep going to 20. There we are, 20, and uh, I don't see any distortion. I got bad eyes. There we are, 30, and now I'm starting to see some distortion, particularly at the top. Um, let me go ahead and see if we can zoom in on this a little bit, and you'll be able to see it. So you can see uh, there's some some problems at the bottom and at the top. Let's go up to 40, and let me adjust this a little bit. Our voltage peak to peak is down below five now. Let's go up to 50, and yeah, frequency counter is uh, pretty accurate there. Let's go up to 60, and there we are at 70, and we'll go all the way up to 80. And so while we see a little bit of distortion here, I don't think it's problematic. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that that's an issue or challenge, especially for like, um, this is like uh, consumer or prosumer grade equipment. It's not really lab grade equipment. So I think this is more than adequate, more than fine. And a lot of these um, signal generators or wave generators you see don't have this much um, bandwidth. They don't go up to 80, 80 megahertz. Let's, um, let's see what we can do about the wave. 
So I, I, I put it on pulse, but it's not going to uh, going to work so much because of the, the the frequency that I have it set at. So let me see if I can turn this down. No, this thing should start to square up. Uh, right now we are at four megahertz, and uh, there you go. You can see a little bit of distortion there. Uh, let's go ahead and there's triangle, which looks okay. Let um in terms of triangle, let's see if we can up the frequency a little bit and see what happens. And so here is 20. And um, I want to see if that starts to look more like a sine wave than a triangle wave. And it's getting a little rounded there, but uh, again, I think that's okay. Let's go back to the wave. wave. This is supposed to be a positive ladder, and that's a little, that's a little messy. But uh, if we go to the frequency, oh, and I turn this down, it should start to look a little bit better. And we are at 2 megahertz right now. So there's still a little bit of distortion on there. Let's go back to the, um, the sine wave. Oops. And what I want to do here is I actually want to apply some modulation to this. And let's see what we can do. So this would be an uh, AM modulation riding on top of the sine wave. Let's see what we can see here. And what we can do is we can go back here and I can change this. So this would be <laughs> AM modulated square wave. All right, folks, I know that, that was a quick overview and it wasn't a terribly deep dive, but uh, we did get to play around with the June Tech uh, PSG 980. And uh, this is going to become part of the lab ham shack, whatever you want to call it. Uh, YouTube studio, and I'm sure you'll see more of it in future videos. I want to say a big thank you to June Tech for sending this to me for my consideration, and thank you to everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks.